Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and today I'll be doing the handover demonstration on the Swift Core Niche 694. So coming down the driver's side you've got your mains electric input, so this is where you hook the vehicle up to. And to hook the vehicle up, you'd lift the collar, slide it on, you always hook the vehicle first and then hook your power source and do it in reverse to unhook. You've got your fresh water fill up point here, so it opens with the little key that does all the locks. Open that, get a hose pipe, put the hose pipe in there until it either overflows or until you have enough water on board. Or if you wanted to fill from a barrel or an aqua roll, you can fill from here. This is a 12 volt pump just under this cover here. There you go, there's your 12 volt pump. So you put your pins in there, your hose end into here, and you drop your pump into the water, and it will fill from an aqua roll or a bucket should you not be able to get water to the vehicle. And then underneath, you've got your fresh water drain, which you drain from the switch above the control panel, above the habitation door. And you've got your waste, which again, there's a switch above the habitation door that you press in it. It's electric dump, so you drive over a grid to drop these. Toilets in there, this is where the business ends up in the cassette. So to operate the cassette you need to make sure the blade is on the bottom of the toilet. Lift the handle, slide it out. You've got a handle there for dragging it around the site. You can then take the cap off, which you can use as a measuring stick when you come to refill it with chemical and cap full. Press the button, go to your waste disposal point, which is normally behind your shower block toilet block tip out once you've tipped out fill it with water give it a shake around tip out again and then you would fill with a cap full of chemical or you put a pint of water in and put a tablet down the toilet into the cassette which will act as your liquid you've got an external shower point there so your shower point will just tip into there make sure the pumps on and you'll be able to use the shower for the dogs the boots the bikes the kids Two fridge vents, your Truma boiler flue, so just make sure that's obstruction free at all time. And then in here, LPG, liquid petroleum gas, this is your gas locker. So you can fit two six kilogram bottles in. Obviously, when they're in, make sure these are tied in by the collars on top of the bottle here. It is a left hand thread pigtail. And then you need to nip it up with an adjustable spanner or gas spanner. So opposite threads with it being gas. Turn on the bottle. Once you've turned it on, if you press this for three seconds, the screen button, it allows the gas through the crash valve and into the motorhome. And then when you are traveling, if you just turn the gas bottle off to be safe. Come around the back, you've got your bullet high level brake light, bullet style reverse camera. And then these are just your structure in the back panel should you ever fit a bike rack and you've got your white parking sensors on the rear and then this side you've got your, your garage space so you've got your carpets your tire inflation kit there your external shower hose your own unwinding handle in there as well and on the passenger side you've got an external 230 socket so should you be hooked up and you've got your awning out on a nice summer's day and you want to put some power into your awning you've got power there and you've got an external gas point there where you would connect to here with turn on connect the other end to your kayak or your barbecue and this will work off the main bottles on board to save you carrying an extra and then at the door, so the passenger door, you've got your lockable diesel cap which works with the main ignition key. So you just open it up, put the key in, open it up, fill with diesel and then lock it back up. And then inside on the passenger door slam panel, you've got your tyre pressure. So the 5.5 bar all round, which is 79.5 psi all round. Your engine battery lives underneath this cover, so should you ever have to change it in the future, you'd have to lift it out the cab floor. And you've got your bonnet release on the side of your passenger dashboard there. And then in here, 
you've got your various liquids so you've got your screw wash in the corner then this cover lifts off and there's your power steering fluid and your radiator coolant you've got your brake fluid your oil filler and dipstick and then you do have your so if you just put your key into here and lift up this is your positive for a jump start in there so it would clip onto that contact there and then you'd put your earth onto here for giving or receiving a jump start so once inside the motorhome above the habitation door you've got your fresh water drain which is electric dump so you'd press this to drain the fresh water off down here and then you press this to drain your waste water off as well so you drive over a grid hit them and drain the water off and obviously you'd want to drain that off in the winter as well when you're not using the motorhome and then this is your main control panel so if you are hooked up you'll get this little electricity sign there that means you're on 230 volt if not you will just get 12 volt which is off your leisure battery you've got your on off switch down here which will either give you 12 volt or 240 volt and scroll through the settings here so if we just scroll through you've got your leisure battery is charging which means you are hooked up you've got your vehicle battery is good which is 12.8 you've got your solar which is going to the batteries which is 0.3 obviously when hooked up the solar panel tends to go to sleep because the hooker brings in the bigger charge you've got your select battery you always want the battery select to be leisure and never vehicle so just leave it as it is your tank heaters if you want to turn your tank heaters on you would then press the middle button so you put them on if it's going to be a cold night and it's going to frost overnight stop the water from freezing it puts a bit of power through the water through the probes and stops it freezing you've got your internal temperature your light dimming setting as well as your voltage of your leisure battery you've got your internal temperature of the vehicle you've got your fridge settings which you can go through here but I'm not complicated we'll talk about the fridge in a moment and then you are back to the start and then on this side you do have your tap which you must put on to work the exterior shower the interior shower the toilet the sink the kitchen sink the hand basin you must have the tap on otherwise you'll just get whatever's in the lines and you've got your light so this switch does under here but the lights are all under visually switch and then this switch does your lights around the motorhome and then the top one does your turns your lights off coming to this this is your truma combi unit so cp control panel and operator to turn on and off you just press and hold here to turn on and get into the settings so it's on standby but it's on so you press on then have the motorhome flashing in the corner with the thermometer in this is the temperature of the vehicle so you can go all the way to 30 degrees being the highest or all the way down to off so once you're happy you just press enter and save that heat at 29 degrees moving further along you've got the water with a thermometer and this is how hot you want your water so you can have it off if you've got no water in the tank eco is 40 degrees and hot is 60 boost prioritizes the water so if the heating's on it will turn the heating off so for this we'll just say hot and then moving further along you do have your source so you have gas on its own if you're wild camping a mixture of one kilowatt of electric and gas a mixture of two kilowatts of electric and gas which you'd use in the winter to heat the vehicle up quicker or the water and then once it got to the temperature you turn it on to electric so you must have both sources for this to work electric on one kilowatt and electric on two so more sites you'd use electric on two as you've paid your site fees and you don't want to waste your gas but for this to heat the vehicle up quick we'll just say it mix two and then moving on you've got the fan so you've got it on eco which is a lower feed of 12 volts because it's just assisted fan high we can have done boost which will boost your heating as it will make the fan run quicker so for this we'll just say hi and then moving further down you've got a timer on the bottom corner so you can time the heating to come on and off you've got a clock and should you ever get a warning triangle in the middle which either means you've run out of gas your gas is switched on you you're not on mains power or you've got a problem with the boiler you can go to the spanner here in the corner go all the way down to reset click reset 
click reset it'll then say preset click preset and it will do a factory reset on the, the control panel to lock your door it is on the main central locking so i'll get to how you can lock it in the cab in a moment but you can lock it off the key or if you want to lock it manually you just press this small chrome catch in and this locks the habitation door you do have a fly screen and a blackout blind on there for an evening so now in your kitchen you've got three gas burner rings so lit like so once you've had them on allow them to cool before you put the glass lid down otherwise you can shatter them and then underneath you've got your oven and then on the other side you've got your grill so with the grill you've got to hold it and allow the thermocouple to get warm before you release so, so allow it to get warm and then you can release and it will stay lit also with the oven shelf if you take it out when you travel as it can rattle or wrap it up then when you put it back always make sure that the curved bit is towards the back as this stops the, the jets being blocked by food and underneath storage drawer and you've got a flap and in here in the cupboard you've got your gas taps which are here so it tells you about your gas taps there so these are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced a technician will test that the gas is working accordingly any problems with gas for turning it off at the bottle but these are mainly for when the vehicle gets habitation checked and then coming up here you do have your microwave on 240 volt only so only when you're hooked up and then you've got your plug in there should you ever need to isolate it you've got your solar regulator at the back it's flashing away there green which means it is working you don't need to do anything with it you've got your plates and your cup rack there you've got two 240 volt sockets when hooked up only these will work and then you do have a concertina cupboard with a cutlery drawer and storage underneath the sink and across from the, the sink area you've got your fridge and operate your fridge you've got your on off switch here so you can turn the fridge on and off by pressing and holding so that's turned it off so to turn it on you just press and hold and then as you can see this is an automatic energy selection fridge so it automatically picks the best source for you so we're hooked up and the gas is on so it's picked hook up so the plug is hook up this is gas and then the battery it isn't your leisure battery it's a 12 volt feed from the alternator when the engine's running it is designed to keep the temperature at the same temperature when you departed so it keeps the fridge at the same temperature so the beauty with this is if you keep this at home or you've got storage a storage yard with electric hook the vehicle up the day before put the shopping in the night before and then when you start obviously your shopping's nice and fresh and cool you put on a battery when you travel and to manually override it you could use this one here so you've got a battery there and it's failed because the engine's not running and there's the warning or we can manually put on a gas and it'll self-ignite do take in mind with the auto if you pick up gas it will wait 20 minutes before lighting on gas so you will get the warning so you will have to turn it over to gas manually and then you can turn it back after um, you've lit it on gas this is for if you pulled into a petrol station and filled up with diesel last thing you want to do if it's on automatic is it for it to be igniting on gas so because obviously you can't find hook up you can't find battery you can find gas though if you've left your gas open so do it will automatically wait 20 minutes and then you've got your temperature on this side freezer box with a removable freezer box shelf so you can remove this should you want and then you do have your fridge and then with winterizing as well if you clean the fridge out and then if you just leave the fridge door open ajar to stop the fridge from 
basically if you close the door the fridge will then start going mold in it to the fridge then above the t the fridge you've got your tele booster on the back so you've got a minute max so you can max the booster or minute if it's too strong and then if you're struggling to get a tv signal you can loosen the nut off at the top push the aerial up and then you can use this little toggle on the bottom to, to tip the aerial over on its side and direct the aerial but a tip is just to look where all the motorhomes and caravans are pointing on your site and you should get a decent enough tv signal and then when you are traveling always make sure that the stem of the aerial is pulled right in and securely fastened with the nut above. For the concertina blind there, so for privacy, you can pull that across. And then on this side you do have your TV bracket, 12 volt socket. So if you are going to get a TV, I would suggest a 12 volt TV, as you can use them just off the leisure battery, and you do have a coax input for a aerial. So operate all your windows, just push the catches and open them up, push them out and then you need to push it all the way in and bring it in and make sure all your windows and skylights are securely fastened before you do start travelling and then you do have a blackout blind and a fly screen and then to depart them you just push it up here, pull it back and then you open the window. Underneath your bed you lift your bed up and in the corner here if you see the yellow tap so it's like a toggle tap so it's lying down at the moment in the winter you need to stand it up on end and this will drain your boiler off completely so your boiler's underneath here you need to drain it off of the 10 litres of water as well so come in with no electric on don't put the control panel on don't put the pump on lift that up empty your fresh and waste by the switches above the habitation door the water from the boiler will drain directly underneath the chassis of 10 litres you would then open your other two waste and fresh open all your taps within the vehicle to allow any water that's in the pipe to drain off and take your shower head off the hose and allow the hose to lie in the shower tray to stop any build up of water and then once you are ready to use the vehicle you would shut your taps, shut your, shut all your taps within the motorhome, fill with fresh water, come in, put the pump on, go to the cold side of the tap first, you'll automatically get cold water, because it's coming from the main cold tank. You then go to the hot, it will cough, splutter, make all sorts of noises until it reaches its 10 litre limit in the boiler, and then it will come through pressurised as it's pulling the water from the main tank into the 10 litre hot water boiler but obviously make sure that you do drain your boiler off during the winter as it isn't covered under warranty as it's your responsibility to winterize your motorhome the operator skylight above the island bed at the back push this catch in here slide it along slide all the way open or you slide into the grooves for ventilation should it be a nice day always make sure when it shuts the bars back and this is popped out above and you do have a fly screen and a blackout blind on the skylight as well this is your traveling seats in the traveling position so as you can see the infill here has been removed so you can get both seats feet for the passengers down and both seats can be used by lifting this flap over you can make it into an L shape when you're on site and then if you just release this catch here and slide this one forward slide all the way forward you've got your power supply unit so this is where all your trips and switches are so just behind the driver's seat you've got all your 12 volt fuses so it would be a good idea to carry some spare blade fuses which are all listed here of what fuse does what and then you do have your trip tester so your RCD and your MCBs on mains 240 power as you can see the mains power coming in there you've got your charger on 240 and you've got your heating and hot water on 240 volt obviously it does work on gas your heating and hot water but this is just your you must have this on for the heating and hot water work on mains electric otherwise it will fail you'll get a warning triangle so just leave these on 
and you've got your system shutdown button so in the winter if you did want to stop any battery drains you can turn the system shutdown off as you can see on and off so you just pop the button out and you've got your weight plate here from the Swift Group so it's got your chassis number on and it's got three and a half ton gross vehicle weight if you were to tow anything with it you can tow up to 5.5 ton which gives you a ton weight of two ton behind the motorhome so this is how to configure the bed with the cushions so you've got your infill cushions which is in your back wardrobe your backrest which just goes along here your two back cushions which go on here obviously your base cushion and your base cushions for your L shape and then if you we'll show you how to make the bed with the boards below so what you need to do with making the bed is you pull this one out and then you'd adjust so this will all be folded up and pushed in so you release the catch on the bottom here slide it out so if you Slide it over Slide this one in and out So release the catch at the bottom, slide it out Slide the boards back Then you've got two boards that hide under here on a hinge So you'd hinge them over Like so, which creates, this fills the space in And then you get your table from in the back And it rests on the groove here And the groove in there and forms the bed board in the middle and then you would put your cushions on and that's how you'd make your bed at the front of the motorhome so fold them out fold them over table in the middle and the location of your fresh water tank is underneath your traveling seats so you've got access there to your water tank should you require so for your table you put your pedestal leg which lives in your wardrobe which just slides in and out of the you fit in there on the floor and as you can see you've got an extension bit on here which you can release and slide out if you wanted to make the table bigger and then you fit it on the bottom of the table on here like so and then you've got your extension on so when your cab and passenger seat is swiveled you can use it and you can all dine or you can turn it the other way have it like so when the seats are spun and then now in the cab to the right of the driver you have your handbrake electric windows and electric mirror adjustments which you've got two on each so you've got the top and your blind spot mirror you can adjust headlight adjustment and your rear fogs your white best stalk has got your trip computer on the end so it'll tell you your range your distance traveled your average consumption of fuel, your current consumption of fuel when the engine's running, your average speed A, your travelling time A, and then your date and you have a trip B as well, which will tell you that as well. You've got your lights and your indicators, you've got obviously mute, volume, voice command, declining and answering a call, scrolling through your contacts or your tracks or radio stations. Obviously this is a Comfortmatic gearbox, so when you park it, you need to park it in gear and leave it in gear and handbrake on. So there's no park, so you do have to use a handbrake when you park it in neutral. Just when it, you turn the ignition off, it will beep a couple of times because it's telling you you're in neutral where it won't if you're in automatic. So you go up to neutral, down to reverse, up. So it's either, it'll either show a one in there that's in manual mode or you can press again and it'll go to auto one which is automatic and you don't, it'll automatically change gear for you otherwise you can go up and down the gear should you need to you've got a traction control so this turns the traction control off so if you're on a wet boggy field you can turn that off that'll stop the wheels from spinning you've got hill descent control hazards locks the cab doors and the habitation door so the motorhome door heated mirrors a 12 volt for USB for charging purposes only and the 12 volt the 12 volt for the radio is underneath by the cup holders then you do have FM AM and DAB radio stations there so you can press to save three on the front or you can press to all and you can see 12 stations on FM or DAB you've got 
media which can be Bluetooth audio, USB or CD. You've got your navigation which is a TomTom -tom navigation. Just one thing with the navigation, I would never put your household address in if this is where the motorhome is staying. As if somebody steals your motorhome, they're going to know where you live. So just put somewhere near your house to get home to. And then you've got phone, so you can go to phone settings and add a device. Find Uconnect on your smart device, make sure the pins match. Once the pins match, press play on the head unit and play on your phone. And then it'll ask you if you want to allow your contacts to be synced. If you do, press allow and it'll save all your contacts into the head unit. And then with the navigation, if you did want to navigate to, you can navigate to and put your address in. You press your postcode. Or if you wanted to go abroad, if you press the little flag and then you can change it to the city you want. So if you'd end up going abroad, this would be how you'd put your airs and your your um coordinates in instead of a postcode. Then you turn on and off here, you can turn the screen off if you wanted to have the radio on in the evening but you get too much glare off the screen, you can turn the screen off, mute, settings and back and you can browse the channels here like so. Above you do have a clipboard for your paperwork or you can pull this lever out at the side and you can use it as a sat nav or phone holder and lock it into place. You've got your Remus carb lines which you pinch on the windscreen and then they are just magnetic so if it's going to be a windy night I would advise putting something around here and then for the side windows you do have your silver foils which will go on the press studs for the side windows. And then when the engine is running you do have your rear view camera when in a forward gear or in reverse. And then that beeping in the clip is just to tell us that we are still hooked up so do not move away as you can see the hookup lead is still in the vehicle. And to turn the seats, you've got two levers on both seats, you would pull it out and slide the seat round. If the seat was to get stuck, you would then just readjust your driving position, either pulling it back or forward.